two of virtual 412. We're obviously trying something a little different this week. And so this video is pre-recorded um, with the intention of kind of watching it as a family um, and then kind of going through the lesson as if you were at present at 412. And then I sent your parents um, the small group leader questions because I'm hoping that y'all as a family can kind of go over um, those small group leader questions. So this is really more curriculum from Sunday mornings, but since I'm not seeing you on Sunday mornings, I thought this would be a great way um, for you to kind of still get that kind of deep Bible study. Um, but just like Sunday mornings and just like 412, um, it wouldn't be the same without some sort of silly game. And so because we are obviously quarantined to our house, we have to be very creative in how we do these games. Um, so I'm limited on supplies, obviously, too. Um, going to the store is kind of a big deal. And so we only go for absolute necessities. And so um, we're playing a game called Say It To My Face. And it comes from Jimmy Fallon, who's the late night talk show host. And um, if you look it up, it's actually really funny. But the, the way you're supposed to play the game is with like four people and you're on a team. And so one person holds up a celebrity's face like on a popsicle stick or something. And then their teammate has to describe who they're looking at. And then the person holding it has to guess who it is. Again, there's only two of us in this house right now, Lila's sleeping, um, and she wouldn't be super helpful, honestly. And so we're gonna have to use my computer. Um, so you, as the viewer, will get to see what's on the screen. Um, and I promise you, I am not looking at the phone. Um, I'm just gonna go based off of what Andy describes to me and hope that I can do this correctly. So we'll see how it goes. Here's our fun game. Okay. Um, I really don't know who this is. She's in uh, the town. I know that, but you probably don't know that. The town. Mm -hmm. So it's a girl. It is a girl. I probably couldn't say she, right? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't really know what the rules are. <laughs> it's our own game. Um, her name is the same as my friend's, and it's a guy's name a lot of times. Um, what friend? I uh, grew up with him. Went to high school. I played baseball with him. Blake. Mm hmm. Blake yeah. Lively. Yes. <laughs> um, Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe. Cool. Um, the at times love interest of Harry Potter. Emma. Uh, yes. There's, is it Emma Stone or Emma Watson? Um, Emma. So. Um, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes and Watson, uh, Emma Watson. Okay, right. good. Yay! Um, famous Dallas basketball player right now. Right now, Luca. You know his last name? Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> How about Doncic. <laughs> um, Forty Four's wife. I think Forty Four is that right? Yeah. Forty Four. Forty Three and Forty Four's wife. Um, former president's wife. Barbara. No, after. Hillary. After. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle Obama. Yes. <laughs> um, she writes all those heartbreak songs. Started out in country, and now is in pop. Oh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Will Smith. Yeah. Yay! Here we go. Here is the lesson. So um, the series we're talking about is <clears throat> how we can more live in today and what God has for us today. Um, and so the, the game was kind of funny, but the point of the game was that I do find myself sometimes comparing my life to that of a celebrity, right? Like I wonder what it would be like to live in that cool house or what would it be like to, to put on a concert for thousands of people and what that's like. Um, but the focus of the series, like I said, is to focus less on what we don't have and more of what we do have um, and kind of be able to find joy in that. So last week we talked about the, I guess the title of it was that you have a past, right? And a lot of times when we hear that term, it tends to be kind of negative. Someone has a past, it means they've done bad stuff and um, it just doesn't always have a good, people don't think well of it when you hear that kind of term. 
Um, but we also talked about how every one of us has a past, whether it is something kind of intense or it's super boring or whatever it is, but that we all have, we came from somewhere and we are somewhere today, right? So we all have some sort of past and how God can redeem it for, for good. Um, last week, I also talked about Moses. Um, I introduced you to Moses and kind of the beginning of his story and how he was a Hebrew baby that was supposed to be killed, um, but his mom put him into the river. He was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He ended up kind of immersing in that, being immersed in that culture and that life um, and, and did really well for himself for a while until he found an Egyptian, Egyptian, Egyptian soldier beating a Hebrew slave and Moses took it upon himself to kill that soldier. And obviously he feared for his life at that point, And so he fled out into the wilderness. Um, and so Moses, as of right now, doesn't have um, the greatest rap sheet and kind of is not making good choices. Um, and so we're going to pick up in Exodus chapter 3. And I'm just going to read verse 1 through 14 to kind of give you an idea of where we left, where we're picking up the story now. Um, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. As he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness, he came to a mountain. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that that bush was on fire. It didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I will go there and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God, your almighty father, the father of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into, into a good, spacious land a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, and all these other people with names that I cannot pronounce. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen them the way Egypt I have seen the way Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring out the Israelites? And God said, I will be with you. This is the sign that it is I who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? Then what should I tell him? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. The I am has sent me to you. Okay. So in this, mo in this moment, Moses is freaked out. He left on not great terms, right? Um, so he's being asked to go back to Pharaoh and stand up to him, even though he did something really bad, um, and free his people. So um, this is kind of a big deal. Obviously, I would be scared too. Um, Moses, I think, is trying all kinds of things to get out of this. He's kind of beating around the bush and saying, well, what do I say and what do I call you and how do I do it? Because he's scared. Um, okay, so I think the other thing to point out, sorry, I'm reading my notes. Um, I think he's worried about how, like I said, how he'll be received. He's nervous and so he's making lots of excuses. Okay, so um, we will pick up his story a little bit later, but I kind of want to leave it at that. Um, and I want you to understand that no matter where your relationship was, relationship is with God, um, whatever kind of past you have, it can be redeemed. If we fast forward to the New Testament a little bit, um, from Ephesians, so this is Paul. So Paul also had quite a past. Um, he gives us kind of a little more insight into what kind of what God was calling Moses to do and what God, God calls us to do. So this is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. And this is Paul, Paul's speaking. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ 
and is seated with it and seated us with him at the heavenly reigns in order in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us christ jesus for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and it is not from yourselves it is a gift from god not by works, so that no one can boast okay so again now paul is reminding us as well that there is nothing that we can do um to to change how god feels about us we are saved by his, by his grace um obviously i don't think any of us have quite the past that moses has um but even despite all of that god is calling him to do something in this moment and i think that's the other thing that we're trying to remember is that we can't dwell on where we've been or what happened before we were quarantined to our houses um that we're we really need to live for today um you know i do find myself a lot kind of thinking back to things that i did or people how i talked to people before all of this um obviously i can't go back um but i can make an effort to reach out to them um i can make phone calls that i haven't made before i can you know ask people to facetime i did actually i talked to a friend last night via facebook video chat that's something i've never done before um and then i also find myself daydreaming about what i'm going to do when this is over right well as soon as it's over this is what i'm going to do this is who i'm going to go see but i think what's important to realize is that god has something for us right now who can we be impacting right now what can we be doing right now in the moment while we're stuck at home um so what i want you to hear too is that you are not too young to do something you are not not ready um, or you're maybe you think that you're not allowed to do something meaningful, but I challenge you to find something today to figure out how God can use you today. Um, there's one more scripture that I want to read, and this is from John. Um, this one's way short. It's really popular. You may have heard it before. Um, this is from John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it and have it to the full or to the fullest, right? So Jesus came so that we can live our lives to the fullest. So even in this crazy, weird stage that we're in where we're stuck in our house and we can't go anywhere, God has something for us today and he's gonna use us today. So there's some things I want you to think about. Um, I sent your parents small group leader questions and I challenge you to maybe sit down and talk with them a little bit. Um, there's also kind of a challenge at the end of that where you maybe do some journaling. And so I challenge you to do that, but I want you to think about what, it, what is God asking you, asking of you today? Has he already given you tools to do whatever he's being, whatever you're being asked of? So think about kind of what tools you already have that God can be using. Could he use you just as you are? Can he use you just by who you are today and not a year from now when you've gained more knowledge or more experience, what can he do today to use you? Could he be saying you are called, you are ready, you are enough right now? All right, think about that. Um, spend some time with your parents talking through the small group questions. Um, I will be on Zoom at 6 p.m. So I hope to see you then and we can chat some more.